finally found her. She looks to be about 20 years old and 4 tons in weight. He's eating a hadrosaur, the preferred food choice for an adult T-Rex. Over the next 10 years, she'll continue to grow, reaching 7 tons and having a bite force of 8,000 pounds per square inch thanks to her fused nasals, a trait only found within the Tyrannosaur family. Huh? What's that? <laughs> Well then, that's the end of the drone I guess. G'day everyone. The late Cretaceous period is perhaps the most popular time for dinosaur enthusiasts, second only to the Jurassic period thanks to modern franchises. The Cretaceous period was home to some of the most iconic dinosaurs ever seen in modern media, such as the Anki, Triceratops, Velociraptor, the duck-billed hadrosaurs, and of course, the Tyrannosaurus rex. Arguably the sole progenitor of the mass popularity around the Cretaceous period since its first museum exhibit in 1915. However, 100 years later, in 2015, a new dinosaur would be officially named after its discovery by paleontologist Robert D. Palmer in 2005 within the Hell's Creek Formation, the very habitat that T. rex once roamed in North America 65 million years ago. And although not as large as the T. rex, this new dinosaur is now the largest predator to have coexisted with T. rex, dwarfing the previous title holders being Archeroraptor and Pectinodon. Standing at 6 feet tall and 18 feet in length, this dromaeosaurid could weigh upwards of 200 kilos, potentially reaching weights similar to today's brown bears, with a maximum weight of 300 kilograms. This makes the Dakota Raptor one of the largest dromaeosaurids within the fossil record, second only to the more robust Utah Raptor that lived during the early Cretaceous period 130 million years ago in the state of Utah. But unlike the Utah Raptor, the Dakota Raptor was more specialised to pursuit predation, with a slimmer frame resembling its smaller cousins, the Velociraptor and Dionchius Raptor. The elongated shin bones of Dakota Raptor and a shorter and lighter thigh bone provided the necessary adaptions for high speed movement, although comparatively slimmer to other raptors of similar size. Despite being a very recent discovery, we know much about this raptor's appearance thanks to analysis of the recovered fossil pieces of Dakota Raptor. Much like recent trends in media, this raptor was not the typical scaly reptilian of the 1990s, but rather this raptor was covered head to tail in thick feathers and would have looked much more bird-like. In keeping with the image of birds, the wings of Dakota Raptor possessed prominent bumps along the ulnar forearm bone. These bumps are identified as quill knobs, a very rare trait within the fossil record and unequivocally prove that Dakota Raptor had prominent feathers despite being flightless. Quill knobs provide the attachments necessary for larger feathers or remages, which in today's world are for flight feathers, and with a diameter of 10mm, these feathers were very large, with a possible wingspan of one2 meters. Dakota Raptor was indeed flightless, and yet, despite this, its wing feathers were very well developed. Like modern birds today, these feathers could have been used for mating rituals where the males would show off their vibrant colours to impress the girls and to ward off other competitors. This display of feathers would also be used to establish dominance during territorial disputes to prevent fatal injuries from occurring. With regards to modern birds, such as the cassowary, the large wing feathers may have provided the necessary stability for kicking attacks between competing Dakota raptors, which would be a safer option than biting, which would risk damage to the head region. But to speculate for another use of this unusual trait of the Dakota raptor may be due to the presence of juvenile T. rex. Towering over the much smaller Dakota raptor, its only hope for surviving such an encounter 
would be to either outrun the, uh, the prominent wing feathers of Dakota Raptor. May have provided an effective intimidation display against larger juvenile T-Rex, which overlaps in hunting niche with Dakota Raptor. Keep in mind that juvenile T-Rex are built for speed, with much smaller head-to-body ratios and elongated legs more suited to pursuit predation. The exact same physique of Dakota Raptor. And speaking of hunting niche, the speed and agility of Dakota Raptor would enable it to hunt much smaller prey such as Leptoceratops gracilis, Ornithomimus velox, Thessalosaurus gabani and Neglectus employing a combination of ambush tactics with pursuit predation. Once its prey has been caught, the giant 16-inch diameter hooked claw would clamp down, preventing escape. The hooked claw of Dakota Raptor was extensively used as evidenced by a relatively enlarged flexor tubercle located at the base of the hooked claw. The flexor tubercle provides the necessary flexor muscle attachments and dictates the overall slashing strength of the claw. Given the relative size of the flexor tubercle of Dakota Raptor, it is very likely that this raptor possessed the strongest slashing strength of all raptors for the hooked claw. Prominence of such an adaption implies an extensive usage of this hooked claw that required greater slashing and pinning strength Hence, this indicates a possible hunting habit of pinning live prey with the hooked claw before going for a killing bite. And so, that is the Dakota Raptor, the largest predator to coexist with the T-Rex within the Hell's Creek Formation. Jurassic Park definitely missed their mark by not noticing this iconic raptor, especially with recent perceptions of dinosaurs having feathers. But anyway, comment down below what dinosaur you would like to see next. This video took me over two months to make, especially as I redid the script three times, so please like, share, or subscribe. But until next time, I will see you in the next video.